Hi. Great. Welcome everyone to the Festival of Chinese Lights Committee meeting, March 21st. We're just going to get started with um, catching up on where we're at. Um, what we know so far is that it's December 3rd of, the, of this year. We'll be having the um, Chimes and Lights Festival in person downtown. Um, we have Christmas around the world as our basic theme. And this year we're focusing on Scotland, Scottish Christmas. So um, as far as that goes downtown, um, we'll be working on things like with plaid and you know Scottish kinds of things. Um, hopefully we'll get some bagpipe music going and um, we'll, we're ready to start including some of the choirs again. So Kathleen and Emin, is that going to be something you guys are going to take on? Yep. We can okay. do All right. Um, so calling the choirs, letting them know. And uh, basically, we're going to have the same um, schedule of events that we had in the past. Um, Kathleen, do you think that you will be having a kids crafts this year? Yeah, planning to. We're planning on it. OK, good. Um, and I think the whole Scottish thing will be real easy to work with. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 kind of fun. Um, so in the past, we've had 10 to 1 on that for the kids crafts for you guys. Is that something that sounds good? Yeah, we've done it all day for kids okay. crafts. So okay. we did like drop it. Yeah, we did like 10 to. So we used to do, we would do like a, sh a performance. Um, yes at some point. So if we did the crafts, I, I don't have the old schedule from 2019 in front of me, but. Okay. Um, you know, we did, um, you know, when you had magician, Jeff Evans, uh -huh. he went from two to 245. Okay. So is that. Yeah, we can, that? we actually, yes. Do you want to, we can talk to Jeff about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Chris crafts basically all day. Um, until, should we say seven? Um, so we did, we stopped it for the show. And yep. then um, I think we, re, we restarted, but then we didn't do it all evening because we didn't want to, did we do it all evening last time? I think we stopped it because we didn't want to conflict with the choirs and tree lighting. Right. Uh, so what time is that starting? I'm, Kids crafts went from three to seven. So it went from 10 to one, and then it picked up from three to seven with okay. in between the two to 2.45 is when with, you have your live music yeah. uh, magician. Okay. Okay. So we could we could uh, cut that back a little bit though. What do you want to do? Oh, we open. We, we know what our hours yeah, are. We and, it, and you know what? Another thing, Kathleen, it doesn't have to start at 10 either. I mean, you can have that start whenever you want to, because the event basically isn't starting until um, a bit later. Uh, has anyone heard? I know there was an application in for a run. I, I'm doing a bunny trail for a second because that's going to affect what we're doing here. Uh -huh. um, yes. Brandy, have you heard? Yes. Yeah, so it's my understanding that um, peak performance timing, who was going to do the Jolly Jingle run last year, canceled. And then because of the um cost efforts uh, they're no longer going to be doing that run but they are coordinating it with run amok with which is ginger who does the other uh runs throughout the city throughout the year so uh ginger has uh is planning on putting on a run i just don't know she just sent me the application i believe saturday but I have to look to see if she's going to hold them where she normally holds them, which is down by the port. I don't know that she's going to start it where we normally start it. Um, let me see if this if this is the one that she submitted. So she was going to have her run on the pathway then. Yes. And d does that require street closures? Does she have to do a yes. one-way street closure? Yes, out by uh, uh, Annapolis in that area, right on that um, West Bay Center, heading towards Annapolis. Yes. 
Okay, so you know you haven't been you've been to the last meeting or two. We talked about a run, and merchants didn't love having the streets closed down. Of course, maybe this would not affect it. Um, but we were thinking that having a run in the midst of chimes and lights wasn't the greatest idea anymore because of the feedback we were getting from the downtown merchants. Um, I don't know what this proposal looks like, but we may be combining too many things at once and that'll be something all of you probably should be weighing in on. Um, and we need to probably find out more about that run and how involved yeah. it is. Because, you know, Brandy, another thing is that would most certainly involve the police. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just depends. I mean, if she's doing it the same that she does her other two runs, I think there's uh, limited police presence just based on her runs. But um, it's a little bit different when it's involved with another event that's happening on the other end of town. Right. Um, so um, I guess it just depends on if Chimes and Lights is still going to use the um, Port of Bremerton gazebo parking lot area. If they're not going to it, not going to use that area, then I would assume that um, Run Amuck could use it. Um, but if Chimes and Lights plans on using that area, then um, we do, we do. So that would have to be part of the plan. Um, well, I mean, that's where we yeah. have, yeah, we have um, Kathy sets up quite an elaborate display down there. Not well, in that area. Not, well, you're talking. Yeah. You're talking way down by the gazebo. Mm -hmm. Where Santa used to be, the Santa and sleigh. What uh, time is? Do you know what time that the run was proposed to take place at, and how long? Um, if it's her normal runs, which I have to find out, she hasn't submitted an application yet. Um, actually, let me see if she put in a reservation. I think she put in a reservation. I think the application is due June or July. I don't have okay. the exact date in front of me. So, and that's going to be the same with uh, Chimes and Lights. So we'll have the same deadline as they do to get our final application submitted to the city slash the chief. Okay. Um, if. No time to sedate. So if. So if, so both of us will have the same timeline because it's on the same date. Um, if what's gonna happen is if we submit the application and there is an overlap in the use of the area. So whoever submits the application first um, will get first rights, if you will. So if Chimes and Lights put in their applications first and identifies that they're gonna use that specific area and has the, the plan uh, put together and, and what they're going to do and we submit it, then we are considered what is vested. If uh, we don't put in ours first and run amok puts in theirs first and claims that area, then they will have first right. Um, and then uh, we won't be able to use that area. However, with all that being said, because there is road closures for both events, especially the chimes and lights and the run amok, um, both events will go before council and it ultimately will be up to council. They'll have to decide which one they're going to want. I think it's really hard for us as a yeah, committee. Staff cannot, staff cannot approve it administratively. That council will restrict, uh, strip that rights away. So I cannot approve chimes and lights and I cannot approve run amok. That will all be before, the, be before the council. So I will have to submit a full application to the council and then I will have the chief support or not support or whatever um, in a plan for both of those and it'll be up to the council. Okay, we did discuss this. Sharon, everybody, um, there were quite a few over at the meeting when we talked about the value of having a run in the midst of the, the event. Yeah. Um, anybody want to weigh in right now? What I recall is that um, merchants didn't love having um, the street closure being so long during the day. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the advantages of Chimes and Lights is that we start later, a bit later. So we wouldn't need to have um, complete street closures, you know, the entire day which would be better on the merchants and then allow for um, customers to come and go because that has turned into a problem for downtown. Right. Um, and, and if so, they use the same route as they normally do, they, it won't affect any of Bay Street at all. 
they run the yeah, path all the way through. So but Brandy, what I what I don't feel I think it does affect us just by having an event that day. And because of all the signage, it basically competes. And it was a little bit different when we had Jingle Bell Run um, because that was a little bit more um, participation with um, the city. This I see is a little bit different um, and in, Run Amok has never had um, a run during Chimes and Lights. Um, peak Performance was trying to take over the um, Jingle Bell but this isn't Jingle Bell. Um, so I'm feeling um, like this isn't gonna work to is, have another is event. A, is there a reason why they can't have that run in the morning? In, well, a, a their runs day. normally are in the morning, so I'm not quite sure if they're gonna tailor oh. it to late it, afternoon when Jingle Bell Run used to be, or if they're gonna stick to the exact same time in the same route. I suspect that they would probably stick to the, at least the same route because they will have to do two traffic control plans for two different yeah. events. And I suspect that they're not gonna do that. Um, so ultimately it's just, once I receive the application, I bring it before I route it as normal and then it goes before council and the council has to make the decision. So, um, you know. The problem that the merchants yeah. had with the Yukon Do It run that happened the week before Christmas it was in the morning, it was early, but the parking was completely taken up on like one of the busiest shopping days of the year. And nobody had any uh, like previous knowledge that that was gonna happen. Oh. So all of a sudden there were all these signs and then there was like all of these runners had parked and then they, it, that was a marathon too. So they were running yeah. out running for a lot longer. And yeah. then they stayed and, you know, went to breakfast or whatever, but they didn't shop and so they lost a lot of the ability for their customers to park. So it's going to be important for POBSA or individual businesses really um, reach out to the city and give us those comments. So when we publish that an event is happening, uh, we mm -hmm. typically leave the comments open for two to three weeks to let them know, hey, there's an event that's in, you know, coming this area. And we try, you know, Everybody that's on the email distribution list, we send it to, we put it on our website, letting them know that there's going to be a traffic impact based on these dates. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, Ginny, I just had a long conversation last week with um, the, um, her name escapes me, but she is. Ginger? No, she's the business owner of two of the stores downtown. Oh, um, oh, oh uh, president. Samantha? Samantha. Yeah. yeah. So I encouraged her and, um, and she did not believe we had, I had Janine check to see if POBSA was part of the email distribution for the city for public notices. And, and I did check and uh, they are not. So mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to respond to her to let her know that that's really the, the um, outlet that she needs to communicate to the city when these events are happening, that the merchants as a whole are, does not support these events because um, you know, we've been noticing these events for seven years, not that it, you know, means anything, but my office has never received a negative combat comment in writing regarding those public notices. So it's, it's important that we get that feedback so I can bring it to the council and they see that, yes, there is an impact from the businesses. And this is what they're saying, because all I say is, oh, so-and-so says, or so-and-so says, and it's ultimately up to the council to make that decision, whether you know, it, it, it does impact them or not. And they're just going off of their gut or whatever their decisions based off of. And if they have actual written reports from people or, you know, whatever, I, that's just my, my, my comments. So, um, cause I'm well, just taking those comments and bringing it before the council and the council is going to make that decision. Well, what I see is if it's not part of our event, if the run is not part of our event, it's two it, separate impacts, yeah. it impacts the event. Yeah. And we were trying to tailor the event more towards the merchants and the public, not have as many street closures, not have the costs and not have the, uh, I mean, having two events in one day really does um, change things because there, there'd be two kind, two forms of signage. Yeah. And yeah. how do you direct that for just one? Um, I don't think that we want to take ownership of a run that's not ours. That doesn't know it'll be two separate events and we've typically done that in the past with jingle ball run is that they had separate insurance they had separate identify the only difference is the road closure you're right the road closure was uh all solely the city's responsibility liability wise so well brandy we included actually 
Jingle Bell Run was considered part of Chimes and Lights in the past, mm -hmm. even yeah. though we handled it as two separate events. We mm -hmm. welcomed um, Jingle Bell Run in. It was uh, because it was community kind of thing. And that's what's changed is it's, this is, I don't even know why or if it should be called Jingle Bell Run because it isn't. No, um, it's, um, she has a different name for it. I think it's Jingle Jolly Run. I don't know if she's keeping the same name as um, the other one or not, but um, um, yeah, I just have to wait for the application, but yeah, absolutely. Once I receive the application and I route it to the department directors and, um, you know, it, it'll go before council and they'll decide, you know, I'm sure for the very reasons that you stated, they're not going to support the application as, as presented. So, so why do we have to go through the whole process of them filling out an application and all of the time they're going to be putting into it if we, from the very beginning, we've got a city, if we, yeah, our but we have a city identify. event, we right. have a city event that's planned for that day, and this is not a city event. So I think they're going to have to find a different date. And I, right. I'd hate to have them go through that whole process knowing that mm -hmm. um, I'm going to recommend, you know, this... <laughs> Why do we want competition? I just foresee so many problems, including, um, you know, what the changes we've made to Chimes and Lights to try to accommodate um, the business downtown. Right. So, anyway, that's all information. That's all important information to share to the to the council. Yeah. As staff, I have to accept the application and I have to route it. There's nothing in the code that prohibits me from allowing me to accept that application. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll have to work on that a little bit. Okay. So if it was in the exact same area and the exact same route, then absolutely. Um, if she comes in and says, yes, she wants to do the exact same thing that Jingle Bell Run has done, then yes, I can deny the application because assuming we have our application in first, um, if we have our application in first and she comes in, I can deny it if it's in the exact same location. If, if, she, if we have our application in first and we do not identify that we're using any of that gazebo area in any, any of that parking lot, three or four, I don't remember the number, we're not using that. It's available for anybody to use and she submits an application, I have to accept it and bring it forward to the council. So it's gonna be important for, for Chimes and Lights to really determine if they're gonna use that, identify what's gonna be in there, identify it on the application, get the application in first, and then we won't have any issues because um, I can deny it based on a conflict. Um, it's already in use. So, uh, but the well, chief made it very clear he wants the he wants a complete application by 120 days before the event. We can Minimum. certainly put Santa back there under the gazebo if you need to put something back there. Put Santa back there under the gazebo, and we have a the the church that does the cider or hot chocolate or something have always been back there with us do, is we, that the one that do the chili is that the one that does the chili no well? no uh, they're always in a silver a silver colored vehicle and i thought they did hot chocolate and cider oh, okay. but they were always parked over closest to the restroom area in that in that lot area and they were always busy when we had the line mm -hmm. the long line for santa but when we were back there we had the hay rides going and the hay rides would drop people off at that area as well and if we utilize the back side of lot four and kept the two rows excuse me hang on just a minute nicole i'm on a zoom i need to call you back um nicole i need to call you back it was heritage four square church which had the chili by santa sleigh on the bay what is what we called it in the past um and, you know, we switched that around different times with um, whoever was, was providing things. Now we moved Santa down to the grassy area. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that, and that back parking lot was closed mm -hmm. for that time. And there was nothing going on back there for most there was of that. Nothing, there was nothing at the gazebo on the last event that we yeah. did. In 2019, mm -hmm. when we had Santa on the grassy area, because that whole lot four was then utilized for public parking to come down and enjoy the event. Yeah. And then lot whatever lot that is behind Josephine's was closed for Santa. Right. 
and we we kept maybe that one lane open behind mm -hmm. the merchants so they could well, get in and out of there. Open. Yeah. And the yeah. rest of it was closed. And then um, Kathy moved. We moved parking a little bit, didn't we, Kathy? For last year, yeah, the lot, yeah. We just stopped the first row here so that people, so that the cars could go through. But yeah, right, Santa, you mean we didn't do anything with our parking that year? No, okay. I think you guys still had the parking, but yeah, it, I think it's it was just in from what I observed, Santa was more successful down at the gazebo. I don't know if we can keep all the parking open down there too. And just have Santa down there and still allow parking. No, I I would you can, you can suggest that, but the chief, I don't think he'll allow it. He doesn't want the public, uh, pedestrians and vehicle traffic mix. He will require Harrison to be closed. They couldn't just use the sidewalk down there, the boardwalk, because when we have our events in the summertime, we don't close the parking down there. And the, do, Sharon doesn't was close Santa it for the in the, Oh, Santa was in the gazebo. Oh, for some reason, I thought Santa and the sleigh was in the part in a part of the parking lot. No, mm -hmm. all in the gazebo. In the gazebo. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. The, hay, the hayride came in and dropped off people in back of Peninsula Feed. But if we don't have the hayride doing that, the hayride could typically go down in the by the totem area and drop people off there and then they walk in. Because I think if you put Santa under the, under the gazebo and you utilize the first two major rows of parking in back of Peninsula Feed and in front of Bevco and Lot 3 for public parking, that allows people to come in and move through there without gotcha. having to worry about pedestrians because they can walk down the boardwalk. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, Kathy, Kathy, go ahead. We don't decorate the park anymore. So we've had too much vandalism down there. So if you're talking about putting Santa back down there again, that would be a major expense to the port and one that I would have to take to my directors. I don't know that that's something that that we can I can just say yes, we'll do. So that gotcha. would be something to yeah. take under consideration. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So port. Did you that's have not decorated? saying no? I just got to check. Did you okay. have that decorated before though? I don't remember used, a lot of decorations down there. We used to decorate down there, but over the last few years, we stopped um, because we had yeah. so much vandalism down there, people stealing things. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, given that, see what's kind of tricky is the mindset of last year is really different because of this drive-through and the COVID, and, and now we're going back to... <laughs> thinking this all through again um it does seem actually the safest to have santa in the gazebo it really mm -hmm. does because we were doing santa in the port area this past year because of the drive-through but we don't have to have a drive-through and this is going to be everybody back being um on the street so that spreads everything out a bit and we can still keep some parking there and parking is always a big deal um and you know we're going to have to pay for this traffic management and whatever but we kind of have to get this plan in place in order to submit our application because we're competing you know if we, if we put santa back at the gazebo i would like to see um Ken Weekly's kettle corn truck back there because kettle corn, the smell of it brings people in. And the fact that people like popcorn at that time of year anyway, and it just adds another element to having something back there besides mm -hmm. Santa. Mm -hmm. Boy, that would be very cool. And, uh, you know, if we could get a bagpiper, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be cool back there? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know what? I think we should consider this then that way we can do, we can rethink the traffic management in the um, port parking lot. Kathy, what would you suggest if we're doing something like this? Um, I do recall you had issues because there was even vandalism in the bathroom back there, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of issues down at the park, but um, like I said, I can absolutely bring it to my director and see what ideas you know he has. Um, okay, and we could, if we need to, Kathy, maybe what we could do is approach um, some of the nonprofits about maybe taking on decorating that area a little bit with lights or whatever. 
um, get some help that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we, re we really should consider going back there. Mm -hmm. um, and and Kathleen, that, would, that works out really well for the library too, because then people have really easy access to the library, the children. And yeah, I mean, that, it just seems like the year that we closed down that parking lot behind Josephine's, there was nothing happening back there at all. It was dead. But, but when we allow parking there and allow parking over by the gazebo too, people, if people think that they have a place to park, they're more likely to come down, I think. So, um, and Emin just suggested the, the JROTC uh, students would be happy to help decorate, I bet, for the gazebo. Oh, cool. Them. Yeah, and they could probably help clean up too, yeah. Okay, okay, listen, this is awesome. That that and could... we decorated, Sharon, you guys decorated too, the sleigh, when the sleigh was in 2019, when the sleigh was over there behind Josephine's, you did kind of an elaborate setup, but you just put it together that day, right? Yeah, we put it together that day. We had the lollipop, big three light thing that yeah. Fathoms has, and then we used some of your garland, which is still in our Fathom storage, by the way, if you're wondering where it is. It's in our storage, because we put that on the sleigh. Yeah, so we could decorate it the day of, and then okay. take it down. Okay, and I know, let's see, I think Corrine usually asks uh, Larry Stokes if we can use that sleigh. Yeah. Um, if we have our current Santa, you guys, if we have our current Santa, how have we worked that out with him? I don't think he gets in the sleigh. So how, does he just sit in front of it? He, he sat in front of it. Larry, I worked with Larry for the sleigh. Corrine works with Larry for the one that goes in the market okay. area. Oh, okay. And oh so yeah, okay, Sharon. So Larry, we can check Larry, on. Larry allowed us to use one of his uh, outdoor rot, uh, rattan benches for the Santa to sit on. Okay. Well, you know what? I think that that would work out really well. Um, and people love getting in the sleigh, believe it yes, or not, taking pictures yes. with their kids. Yeah, I hear that. And you know, if we if we had music, I remember that something that you all said before is that if we're having something down at that end, we really need music too mm -hmm. to have people that draws people down there. So we're going to have to have plenty of music around. Um, and I think that's that's a good plan. I think um, a bagpiper would be good. One year we tried choirs down there and the sound system just was not quite good enough. And it also was a little bit too dark, but yes, but I think a bet like a bagpiper is really loud. So that would be good. Okay. Well, <laughs> well yeah, you can hear it's, it's like a call too, you know, Yeah, you get them going, <laughs> but you know, yeah. that would be so wonderful because I'd love to see, um, you know, have more bagpiper music. And I think that's half the fun of it. And so if we had enough lighting down there with even though lots of little Christmas lights and stuff, mm -hmm. um, then that should be safe enough. And if we have enough people, it's always having enough people to keep it safer. And um, I do like the idea of getting the, the kids back involved, you know, and maybe we can do more again um, with, hidden things or whatever, you know, for mm -hmm. the kids. Um, okay, you know what? I really like that. Yeah, Kathy? So I would say if you're wanting to use the park in the gazebo, similar to what Brandy just said, we yes. accept applications for those. Um, okay. So I would need an application from the Chimes and Lights to use the park in the gazebo. Okay. Because then if I get an application from the runners, if they are doing that, I don't want to. Come um, now now you got me having two events yep. in one place. So, okay. Um, Kathy, can you send that application um, to Brandy and Janine? Yes. And do we need, do you think we have enough information right now to be able to fill it out? Um, yeah, I don't know. the date kind of thing. Okay. Uh, yes, I do think you have enough. Or right you now. can even send it to me too. Brandy, do you have that already? I think we do. We um, attach it to our application or our special event toolkit plan. So unless it's changed in the last year or two. The, um, it ha I'll send you one. I'll go okay. ahead and send you a new one. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and I'll have Janine fill that out right away and um, get that sent off. And then um, my goal is to um, put together some sort of conceptual of what I think that the uh, traffic plan is going to route is going to be and what areas we're going to use. And then I'll have Janine start um, creating that application 
Okay. That's what I was just looking to see if I can find. Um, I think I have an old route um, that Public Works identified last year of what the normal street closure was. Um, so I'm going to take that as a, a base to send off to get uh, a quote. Um, so the expense is still going to be around 6000 this year, just based on um, uh, we'll, we'll need a new plan because we're doing something different. So that's, I think, 350 bucks ish and then another five, 6000 to do the traffic control plan if they determine that prevailing wage is required. But I think uh, finance and I were talking, we don't think it applies. So it should be about half the cost, but we'll we'll look into that. Okay. On the side so, note, but anyways, I think I have enough information to pass along to Janine to at least get that draft application uh, before the committee next month. And then for you guys to look at, um, and then I'll have quotes for restrooms as well. Um, so um, Brandy, we don't need to have street closure for Bay Street in front of the um, stores by the theater, et cetera, that block, right? We only have to have street closures from Sydney over to City Hall. Isn't that what we're looking we're at? We're not going year? down to Harrison. You won't go down to Harrison. Coast. No. Uh -oh. Okay. No. Okay. And see that that is kind of the key, I think, to making this more successful is not having that whole thing closed. Then what happens is that traffic can enter um, Harrison yep. and the parking lots can yep. be utilized really mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And and then we'll just have to have flaggers say by uh, crosswalk by the library uh, and the ferry there. You know what I mean? Because yep. traffic will be coming through, and maybe and definitely flaggers um, to help with uh, pedestrian traffic crossing Bay Street by the Bistro. And mm -hmm. okay. there we need flaggers, and then flaggers. You know the big crossing on Bay and Sydney to yep. all four directions. But that way, we can have traffic circulating and then just close off um, Bay Street in front of the first section of stores from City Hall, basically, to um, Sydney. Okay. Is everybody, is this sounding good to you? Yeah, if Sydney, yeah. Sydney is usually closed as well down to the library. So, like, because when Santa comes on the... the fire truck oh then he the oh yeah 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 the band leads the parade leads him down bay street and then turns on sydney goes down to the totem pole and then yes i don't know where they go after that because i always come back into the library so then do they go down the boardwalk all the way to the gazebo where santa is is that what they do like santa santa comes through the back way where does the if, Har if Harrison isn't going to be closed, they probably would have to come down the boardwalk because I doubt very seriously that the police chief would let the band march on that street and turn on Harrison. Okay, so the fire truck is going to have to go down where the buses are, but the wrong way. So that right. would be, that would be something to, that we'd have to ask for. But then, yes, yes, that's it. It would just he would just come through the parking lot, which could be open. Yeah. And that would have to be okay. So if that would only be for a pretty short period of time. Yeah, it just drops them off and that's it. So it would only have to be closed from like whatever, like six to six thirty, whatever that time period is. Right. So this is where the traffic management company comes in. Brandy, do you oh. kind of get what we're saying there? Yeah, I'll um, get it drafted up. I'll communicate okay. this to Public Works and get it drafted and sent to you guys for you guys to look at before I get in final yeah, I think before I get it off to the traffic control person. But. So what we'll, what we'll need to do then is get um, input from Kissap Transit because yep. their buses would come through there. And I think that they could continue to come around Harrison and then just coordinate that uh, when the band comes through, right? Yeah. Will, will, you put the fire, will you put the fire pits back along the boardwalk like we've had them in years past when we've been back there? We've had problems with those fire pits. They didn't get lit like the last two times because somebody didn't come up to light them or something. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're down to just a, a couple of them because they're just breaking down. So I don't think we'll need to do fire pits. Um, is that a problem, do you think? Depends on how cold it is. <laughs> Depends 
if, if we, we did like, them, maybe we could do them in the park, like it in the where Santa is sleighs kind of in the front, and then there could be like a couple fire pits, maybe towards the back. Yeah, I think there's only a couple left, so maybe that's where they could go. And Bill could help us with that. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. So limited fire pits. It's not going to be very many. I think there's only two left that were any good. But if that causes huge problems for permits, <laughs> that's yeah. something, that's oh, something that could easily go bye-bye. Is it real fire <laughs> or gas? They're, um, wood. They're, wood. They're, they're wood. wood. I think our rules say no fires. Yeah. I have to um, take a look. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, you know what? The, the fire pits could go. It's a big, it's kind of a big liability these days. And yeah. you know what? People just dress nice and warm. They just and, dress warm. Mm -hmm. And maybe merchants yeah. could help hand out those hand warmer things or sell the hand warmer things. Um, and that would be every store can sell them, you know, <laughs> make a little extra money. Yeah, something. All right. I yeah, I don't in this if world. Maybe Big Five wants to donate and be a part of the sponsor on our event flyer. Well, brochure. now li listen to Brandy. She's got <laughs> this great idea. That is a really good idea. Yes. So a sponsor or Ace Hardware. I don't know if they have some. Or hand warmers. But that's a we'll great Big Five idea. Involved. Yeah. Okay. So I think you know what it's starting to feel like we it's gelling a bit. So. Again, let's can we go back to street closures for a minute? When would we close down then? Do you think we'd have to close down um, City Hall to Sydney? Do you think that when the choirs start that we would need, um, that would be the time we could close down just before then or would we need it earlier? I think like a half hour before the choir starts is good. If, or where is the hayride? So the hayride route from across city, we're not doing hayrides? No. No hayrides. No. Nope. Oh, okay. I know. Yeah, can't do hayrides anymore. They don't, um, they've kind of, a lot of changes there. But you know what? The first choir, I'm looking at this, 315. What time was the tree lighting? The tree lighting is about 5.30, you know, five o'clock. Yeah, this when everybody sort of gathers down there. Um, 5.10, you know, the pet parade. Are we gonna do a pet parade? Oh, well, that's too much. Let's, we're dealing with this part first. So 3.15 is actually our first choirs. Um, kids crafts can be anytime. Mm -hmm. And maybe what you'd wanna do this year is start with your magician or whatever. And then have crafts after that. I mean, it's, I'm just saying, if we don't have a street closure, of course, that doesn't mean that people can't come down. But it, the big part of it will be um, as it gets a little bit darker, then all of the decorated trees will be lit. Um, so we don't necessarily have to have that street closure starting that early, which again, I think the merchants would prefer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If they got in half of a day, let's say, and then the rest of it was just, um, we kept the street, we closed the street maybe at noon or one. Well, really, if we're not doing hay rides, do we even need to close the street until Santa is coming down with the band? I mean. We oh yeah, we do because of, because of people um, wanting to watch the choirs. Yeah, I know you need to close it right there in front of City Hall. Yeah. But then closing it all the way down Bay Street, do you need to do that until like, till the choirs, like right when the choirs start, like five o'clock, close it. Don't the choirs start at three? They start at three, but yeah. Okay, so yeah, so like right at three, like three, close it instead of at one. Well, right, that's what we're talking about right now is, is having it close later, the street. It takes them a while to close everything and get the traffic away. So you have to, you can't close it like, you know, 15 minutes before. It's probably at least an hour plus before. But if we close the street at one or two, then if we have the choir starting at three, 
then um, that might be just fine. Then the merchants have that much time early on and public works and whatever can be setting up, um, have basically everything staged. We could try doing that. And I think you'd please a lot of people. Do we need to close all of Bay Street though at, at one or two? two? Like, can we just close Bay Street down basically for the short period of time that we're doing the parade with the band and Santa Claus? Like, do we even need that part closed? Like a one block closure? Yeah, just like, so from Sydney down, because it's usually closed from Sydney to City Hall, right? So, right. so if we just did City Hall and around Geiger, uh, close that kind of triangle off, starting at one, and then at like five closed off Sydney all, all the way, or closed off Bay Street all the way to Sydney. I think if you close just from in front of City Hall to Frederick, right mm -hmm. around that area. Yeah. If you close just that section for like an hour or two, um, I'm trying to think that so would be a detour. I'm trying to think how the detour would work. I mean, it would, but there's I would no have place for the traffic to go once it enters into that area, because what you would have is it it'd be going into the parking lot, and they'd have to they'd have to make a right on Frederick, right, and go back, kind of back through the parking lot. Yeah. I guess I think it'd be more complicated, and I think I think that chimes and lights usually is just so packed full of people that uh -huh. they spill, they're going to spill over out onto the sidewalks because they're I, I don't know I mean that's I have a feeling um the police chief isn't going to approve a plan that isn't pretty foolproof and safe but the thing is that we can determine when that happens mm -hmm. so if there's just a so really that one is two blocks really the two block um street closure you know, um, from, well, three, counting City Hall, um, all the way to Sydney, starting at one or two o'clock. Choirs start at three, so that's when people would start gathering. And then that, that closure would be just that section there and not beyond Sydney. Mm -hmm. So you, the merchants would have a oh, half of a day, and then they still would have people being able to access behind through the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So basically that really gives them a lot more business opportunity. And I think it still seems safe because we'd have the crossing guards taking care of, um, oh, there you go, Brandy's got this, great. Now that was the, that was the event thing for this year. Right, but, yeah. But it just show you um so like we would close it this would probably still oh wait uh, let's see so to the library and sydney well kathleen was saying just having just this section right here closed yeah and just yeah have the other there. open or frederick is the route out yeah So if you just like they would do that, we would move this barricade to mm -hmm. Frederick on the other side of Frederick. Yeah. yeah. And have that whole section there open for. So yeah. then we. So this is kind of where we need a little bit of expertise input with uh, the traffic management, what would be yeah if that's possible when they would do the jingle bell run for like the first portion of the run like the beginning of the day yeah only the part that just that little triangle at down there by the boat launch from like geiger on would be closed mm -hmm. and like okay. that so there was that whole uh rest of a street was open well you can't run traffic into a dead end so you couldn't have traffic turning around there. Right, so they had Geiger Street was open. So
So traffic could turn up Geiger if it needed to, um, and then route back around. Okay, so like this way. So they just closed from like Geiger. So Geiger was open to go up the hill, mm -hmm. but then at Bay Street was closed from Geiger to I, whatever that is, Water Street. And that was like while everybody was registering for the run. Mm -hmm. And then as it got closer to the time of the run, the whole street was closed. But first first thing in the morning until about in two hours or an hour and a half before the run, that, that whole area was still open. Well, we're proposing on keeping the, the whole thing open, completely open until the choir start. Uh-huh. So well, until like two hours before the choir. Yeah, one or two, mm -hmm. depending on what would be needed to get everybody in place and traffic out of there, whatever's safe that way. Uh -huh. So that probably like one o'clock, 1.30. And then it would just be closing. Well, we'd have to find out. We'd have to get the input from all the powers that be as to what yeah. is safe and a good traffic pattern. If you put flaggers there at Geiger to flag people, you know, that they would have to turn up the hill. Um, I, I actually see that as being pretty dangerous. You know, as people are arriving mm -hmm. with the kids to drop off the choirs and stuff, if you've got people going up that hill and needing to, um, I think I, I just, there's too many people hanging around, little kids and stuff. They, yeah, I don't know if we need to do that. I, I actually think that this is, you know, it's a state highway. So it could be a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. And then you've got that traffic channeling into the neighborhoods where people are trying to park their cars and stuff. Yeah, because they, be they would have them go this way. And I don't think that they would make them go that way. I think they would just close it whether we're using it or not, because yeah. it's going to be easier to direct traffic this way through yeah. that than going through this area here. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to close it anyways, we might as well use it to our advantage and just close it back here like we always have. Yeah. Close it from here all the way to here when we're ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, you know, we we want to get our plan or approved. from here to Orchard or Frederick, if you only want to do just this part, let everybody start gathering here and then open it up when the route, you know, when the parade or what, or the Santa comes and that you can right. do that. Well, now, what we're talking about Kathleen is to just close Yeah, it I mean, if here. we close it to Frederick, that at least would have that block of merchants would have, would be able, cause so people could either turn up Frederick uh, and go out on Prospect or they could turn back into the parking lots. Yeah, cause there's not much shops right here. So this right, yeah, that part. doesn't really matter. A handful, yeah. Yeah. So basically, it would be just open for parking, but not for any kind of commuting, is what it would be. If it was, but Frederick is a, um, it's one way street. Right. So you could go. The chief will not have traffic run down the wrong way on a one way street. No, it, would, it wouldn't, though, because it doesn't it run. It runs up the hill and down the hill. It's Goes down, down the hill. Okay. Yeah. So Goes we north. can have them come here and then route it up this way. We can have them go this way, but then they're just. Yeah, that know. doesn't make sense, does yeah. it? And no. then the part we're going to have. The so part they're going to make them stop place. here and not have them go that way because it's going to be easier again for traffic flow to not even have them come down this way unless they have business. And if they do, Right. Yeah, okay. I, so we basically are leaving the parking open uh, in the on the waterfront parking open and then closing the rest of it. But that wouldn't be done until uh, like we're saying one one thirty or two. So there would be it would be open the whole morning, which is different than we've ever done. We've usually closed it early and kept it closed throughout the whole day. So this would be a big change. Mm -hmm. For the merchants and I think that that's that would be sufficient to really help 
them. And if we're if we have a plan for allowing people to go down Harrison using those lots, and then we have to work out how much this area would be allowed for parking behind the merchants um, stores. We kept that one lane open that one year just for them to use, but they'd have to all come back out onto Sydney, not mm -hmm. go back into the other thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we can't completely reinvent the wheel here, I don't think. Um, I think pedestrian wise, it would be tricky with a brand new plan and trying to have um, traffic routed around City Hall or any of that, because that's okay. where people typically park. A lot of people park on Kitsap Street, uh -huh. Up the and hill. there's a lot of pedestrian. Um, a lot of people park on Robert Geiger too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. I think we should keep that kind of off, and that would be safer. Um, it's just to have that again. We're already giving them many more hours of business mm -hmm. access. Mm -hmm. So block so, them from here all the way to here and start it too? Yes. Assuming that that's enough time to get whatever. And we'll ask for input um, yeah. from Public Works on, on actually, mm -hmm. so that we want it all clear by three. Okay. Because you know, it gets dark pretty early. I, we don't know about the daylight savings thing. I don't know what's gonna happen with that. But um, it does start getting dark early. You know, usually it gets dark around four, 4.30. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll have all that done before that then and people will be downtown mingling and choirs start at three. And um, we'll, we'll probably add to this event a little bit as we get along, if we have time, we'll see what else could be done there. Um, strolling musicians, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then we're going to have the, yeah. and we'll have the volunteers, you know, the, um, oh, here we go. Oof. Um, we'll have the volunteer agencies with their hot chocolate or whatever. And I don't know if Kids at Bank would be open then or not. We're going to do an open house at the marina. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll be open and, and I'll have an open house going and the boat, you know, have the Christmas lane and all that going. So that will be, see, that would be great too for all of that because mm -hmm. pedestrian traffic can be all back from there. And then I, we can have A-frame signs like all down the boardwalk to let people know about the chimes and lights to go further down the boardwalk to Santa at the gazebo. And try to have that musician down there with mm -hmm. Santa, the sleigh, try to get a volunteer agency down there again with food and whatever we do have. Oh, we can't have fire pits, but we'll. Might be able looking. to get away. Might be able to get a, away with some gas ones, but maybe not the real fire. I can I can look into that if we can. Okay. Okay. Get something. Okay. Uh, I got a I got a dart. I apologize. I have another. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you so much because this has helped so much with the planning. But I'll yeah I'll have more information next meeting for sure. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you Hi, so Kathy. much. Thanks, and, Kathy. and send that application. We'll get I did. <laughs> I sent it. <laughs> I already did. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Right. I got it. I know. We make sure now. Now make sure when you're putting a time on there that you allow for decorating because if I get a an application from runners that want it, like last year it was 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. and your event isn't until 5 p.m., then it doesn't conflict. Yeah. Yeah. So oh yeah, yeah. Kathy, well, do you think do you think we could decorate along the boardwalk? like Santa Lane or something? I think it'd be fun. Okay. There's that that metal rail. I mean, if, if, yeah. there's power, if there's power there, I'm not sure what the power capabilities are along the boardwalk. We'd have to go okay. scout it out. Yeah. Oh well, that would be actually lights leading down there would be ideal. It would be yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll have to have, actually we'll be asking for the gazebo area much earlier than we are the street closure. Yeah. Because we do have a lot of work to do, and that does have to be staged. Um, and so that only makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to really think through the street closure for the benefit of the merchants and safety. Yep, absolutely. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. So then, Kathleen, just a quick question then. Would you open 
the library to um, the time closer to the street closure when the choir starts, or would you have something going earlier? You can be thinking we about would it. Probably, so I think it worked out well because the idea was to have people come down, like yeah. right before the choirs or what. So start coming downtown and start gathering. Okay. Which is what, and because if we have it too early, if we had it like at 11, then people wouldn't stay. There's no place time. to go. Yeah. So we'll, we coordinate everything, all of our openings with the performances starting. Like it, we're really thinking Chimes and Light starts at three now. Yeah, right. And so the idea with our performance being at two was to get families yeah. kind of down and parked and see, and that's kind of what the movie would do too. They would, um, yes. you know, run that movie all day, but people will come for the movie and then they would come to the library and then they would go to the choirs. Is okay. The theater, is the theater going to be open during I don't the think time? So. I don't think they'll be ready. Yeah, I don't think they'll They're be not ready. ready. But, They're um, not ready. Um, maybe there'll be something though at the market. Who knows? We'll we'll see if we can think up some other ideas. We just are needing our basic um, outline. So I like this. I I think um, we're saying chimes and lights is really running from three to shall we say seven thirty? Yeah, that's I think thing. that's that's when Santa. Kind of finishes doesn't he usually wrap up around 7 30 Sharon or earlier like seven yeah or seven it kind of depends on the weather but right so um it's just it's fewer hours with more packed into it um and I think that that actually is good for everyone yeah I think if the street closure ends it's I mean it could end even earlier it could end it but if it ends at seven then that's good yeah, and you know what? Again, it takes a while to do that transition. Yeah, safety. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're only going to have that first, those first blocks, and not um, the second half. So uh -huh. that should allow for uh, good circulation, I think, with mm -hmm. traffic. Um, okay, this is feeling pretty good. Then um, we can still stage the band and everything down where the city hall is, and have them come down. Um, Harrison, if need be, you guys, if need be, we will have the band turn at Frederick's. If the chief won't allow uh, mixed traffic on Sydney, or if there's any issue with any of that, then we could have the band go down Frederick Street and um, go back that way to get to uh, behind the, the merchants. Well, traffic, that street's closed, though. Sydney's completely closed. Well, well you're going to close that whole area, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Bay well, Street's completely closed, and then Sydney's closed to the, from the, from Bay, from Bay to the, down to the totem pole, right? Well, so the only question we can't would use, be. We can't trans use any of the parking then, the, if you do that. Yeah, the only question would be Kitsap Transit. Like, yeah, I think they're still going to have buses come through there. So, and that's where the chief's going to not want to have it mixed. So we have to right. shut it down and then transit has to do a different route. Right. Or leave it open. We could, if we, we left flaggers. it open for, if we left it open for transit. Yeah. And then we just have the flaggers down there. Yeah. And, and, and maybe just the, the parking, um, because we have to have people be able to get out of the parking if we're opening that parking up. Yeah. And they've done that in the past, and that actually worked. It wasn't uh -huh. a regular route. I think we only need that section of Sydney closed just when the parade comes down there, right? I mean, that Sydney doesn't need to be closed except for that time when Santa's coming down with the band. As long as, long as crowds aren't, I don't know if they gather on Sydney like they do on I feel Street. like that's what happened in 2019. Do, then, yeah, we're going to have to. In 2019, they, they, the band went around the corner and what happened was there was a delay because yes. the, they were closing that street, mm -hmm. like right as the band came up to it. So it's happened before. Well, this, this will be for um, the police and street management company to yeah. iron out. out. Yeah. I know that we're, we have um, somewhat limited knowledge with this and um, they'll have to work out the, the good pattern, the safest pattern. And if need be, then Santa could go down Frederick's, you know, the band and Santa, and we could work out the route behind mm -hmm. um, with flaggers allowing yeah. them to go at a certain time. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that that would be something then that, that, that might be better. Could, yeah. Uh, it seems safer. Yeah. And more manageable, kind of straightforward. Okay. You know what? We have hashed out some really important stuff today. Um, thank you so much. This is um, huge. And uh, we'll get on um, getting the applications in. I know we don't have everything, but um, enough that we can get the gazebo um, reserved. And I do think it feels very safe. It gets people all through our downtown area. Um, the trees will be lit up. It'll be beautiful, all the lights. Um, and it'll be, it, I think it'll just be extremely festive. And then if we can get the bagpiper or bagpipers to have that music playing from down in the gazebo area, that will attract people down there um, and sharing your idea of the popcorn. Excellent. The only thing in the past is we have had everything during Chimes and Lights be free. Yeah, so, I know Ken, Ken wouldn't move his truck over there and give out free popcorn. I know that as a vendor, he would not do that. Right. Um, but I could ask. Well, or maybe he could be sponsored. Yeah, we could get a sponsor for him and yeah. have like five hundred dollars worth of free popcorn given out, or whatever. Like, however much he. That, yeah, that would That's, be that would be the enticement probably, and that would work. So let me touch base with him and just kind of bounce some things off of him and see what he says that would be very fun mm -hmm. to have a vendor there yeah i i would love it and i think we could probably find some kind of sponsorship somehow mm -hmm. yeah that would be good. sandy uh yeah the other these people that you have listed for hospitality and you were talking about some church giving out chili has all that been confirmed or is no. that what's happened in the past that's what's happened in the past so Okay, so you're you're open to have maybe more. Um, yes. We like we like to be up on that other corner where we were last time, but if we could have some more hospitality down there by Santa, that would draw people down there as well. So it, it's always nice to have free like something. We we did very well when we gave out the cookies and the coffee. People loved it. Yeah. The candy okay. Cane, so. Okay. Well, we'll we'll look. We'll be making those calls to find out who's on board. You know, this and you, is they have to fill out an application, right? They need no. to fill out. No, no, we put it on our application, letting them know that that's there is just part oh, of okay. the okay. event. Right. Yeah, I'll ask. I'll, I'll ask around. Okay. Cool. This is really sounding great. I'm very excited. Okay. Fine. Um, yeah. So. Randy, Randy, is there anything else we would need to work out for the application right now? And I'm assuming we want the sound system and the sound system. Yes. We typically like to get there about an hour before. So right when the road is closed, that's when they're going to want to set up because I want to make sure. So um, I'll coordinate that with them. Um, yeah, he could time. actually start setting up. Um, Gus could start setting up a little before because right. he could park on Gar Geiger and he's there's yeah. no issue with him. So he could set up as early as he needs to, because we would want choirs to start like at that three o'clock starting time and he'd need to be ready. Um, so, right, public works would be busy though. Whatever their timeline would be that they would need and then the flagger company and all of that. Okay, but yeah, I think I have uh, enough to at least get- Get started. 90% uh, completed application anyways before- Okay. You next group. cool mm -hmm. all right this is really getting fun okay yep. so we'll just keep building on it and i've got some cute little scottishy things and we'll work on some of the the graphics this year it looks like we'll be able to have a brochure of some sort um so that'll be really fun to have that um and if we don't do a full-fledged brochure we'll do maybe some little mailer things or something to get the word out in fact i would love to get something out early maybe even in a utility bill before the end of the year that says chimes and lights is on this year and have a little information in it um, because that's a, a um, not that great of an expense. And I think it's it, it gets the information to all, the, our whole community. Um, and social media, we can put it out on social media. And, and keep yeah, it. so we'll start doing a, you know, kind of a save the date thing. Mm -hmm. We're back on, you know, kind of, we're here again, so. Yes, everybody. I can, thank you. Um, 
I can submit an application to the mayor to see if he will authorize a Vessel of Times and Lights Facebook page. Well, there you go. Yes. Go for it. And then yes. um, utility billing said that they can have a sentence or two on the utility billing statement added. They would okay. just need to know exactly what it would need to say a okay. week before the end of the month. So like okay. what to do now, like July or whatever, July and August or June and July, and you can put it in those two cycles or whatever, save the dates. Okay. You could do something like that. I would just need to know what language you want and then I can get it to them. Okay, we'll have that. I'll get that to you um, within a day. Okay. Okay. And then just tell me what months you prefer to have it. You know, do we want, what is, do we want April and May and then August and September or, you know, whatever. I, I don't know what the two cycle months are. Right. So. I think early, the, the earlier we have something that's save the date, the better. And that's, then we'll have a, another one towards the end, closer okay. a little bit to it. Fun. Okay, you guys, this is so neat. Thank you so much. Um, I don't think we have anything else we have to work out. I know Popsa is probably going to be working on coloring contests and all of those details. Mm -hmm. So we'll be catching up on all of that in between. And I know that we'll start um, reserving those trees locations anytime. And then payment, we worked out that date. Um, we, we put down, I think June 1st is when you can start paying for the reservations on the trees. Okay. 24th anniversary. And oh, Brandy, um, Janine was gonna look at the price. Can we confirm the $50 um, being an okay price for charging the trees? She did say that she reached out to all the nonprofits and she's waiting to hear back. So she's already on the, the hospitality piece of it. Okay. Um, we'll be starting to update the tree contest application and web page this week, she said. Okay. Uh, okay, so yeah, she hasn't said anything about a cost, so I will put that on her to list. Yeah, we have to find out if we have to raise that price or if we can advertise the 50. Okay, cool. And um, we have basically the dates in place for when the trees will be delivered, all of that. We figured that out already. I'll send you, Brandy, do you, if you don't have that, I'll send you a um, kind of a cheat sheet with some of the stuff that came out. That's all in one place. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, our next meeting, did we have that on here? April 18th. I think that we're going to be doing most of our um, committee meetings. It sounds like we're going to be doing most of those by Zoom. Is that right, Brandy? Isn't that kind of what the gist of the? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. yeah. So we'll have a lot of um, meetings at City Hall for council and other um, kinds of meetings. But um, Zoom, it seems it's most efficient um, and easier for staff and everybody if we just do this format. Um, so I hope that works for all of you. And I'm so glad to see you here. It's April 18th and we'll have a lot more information. Thanks again. Yeah, Sharon, did you have one more I thing? I think I got a question. Okay. Kathy had mentioned she wasn't sure of the power down the boardwalk where the railing and fence is. Yes. To put lights out there. Once she identifies that, Fathoms may have some rope lights that we could put on that fence because the rope lights that we currently have on the float are coming off. And so we might be able to put rope lights down there. Boy, that would be cool. Yeah, that would look good. Yeah. It would be excellent. And people like would that. just follow the got, lighting down then. And I think you know? he's got even more in storage. So I'll check with him tonight at our board meeting. Okay. Oh, this is really neat. Yeah. So, and Kathy will um, let us know what she has for decorating. But I, you know, I already know that we can talk to Rotary and a few others mm -hmm. about decorating more down down there in the gazebo wherever we need it. Um, and I really do think it would be fun to have people back down in that area through the whole city again. Mm -hmm. um, so this is wonderful, and the lighted boats. You know, it's going to be gorgeous. All right. Thank you very much. See you on April 18th, if not sooner.